So in the last video, we just talked through the mixed logit choice probabilities, and now we're going to uh, kind of motivate those mixed logit choice probabilities as coming from random coefficients in the population. So a common way to rationalize the mixed logit model is by thinking about a random utility model that has individual specific coefficients. So what I mean by that is that the utility that decision maker N obtains from alternative J is going to be a linear combination of beta and X. So we're already making a linear kind of linear utility assumption here. We don't necessarily have to make that, but it, but, but it, it, it is often one that's made with the mixed logit model and makes things much easier. It's gonna be this linear combination of betas and X plus epsilon. This looks exactly like what we've had before, except now our beta param uh, our beta coefficients are gonna be indexed by N. So we're gonna think about this as every decision maker in our sample or in our population has their own set of coefficients. That's not common across the entire population, but each individual has their own set of coefficients. So that's the beta sub n. The x's and the epsilons are just like we had in, in the logit model. X's are data about the alternatives and the decision makers. And then epsilon, we're once again going to assume that that's an IID extreme value error term. And from the decision maker perspective here, each decision maker knows their own betas, their own coefficients, their own preferences, and their own epsilon, every, all of the, the utility that we don't observe. They know all of that. So they know utility for every alternative. So, so from their perspective, the choice is completely deterministic. They know the utility for each alternative and they just choose the alternative that, that gives them the most utility. So this is exactly like we've had in the past. The problem here is that if the utility that a decision maker obtains depends on an individual specific set of coefficients, then but, but, but we, the researchers, don't actually observe that beta sub n. We don't actually observe preferences for each individual. I mean, theoretically, it's possible if we observed like tons of panel data for each individual, but, but in general, we're gonna assume that we we're not able to identify an individual specific set of coefficients for each individual in our data. So even though we've made our random utility model more, more uh, uh, kind of robust, we've added something that we don't observe. But what we can do is model beta sub n as being a random variable with density given by f of beta, uh, uh, where that density is defined by some, some parameters theta. And so I think, I think it's easiest to see, to, to kind of move on from here by first thinking about a thought experiment where we say, what if we did actually know beta sub n? So suppose for the sake of this thought experiment that we can actually observe each individual's preferences, each individual's beta sub n. Well, if we actually knew what beta sub n was for, each, for a given individual, then this model here, this random utility model is consistent with the logit model. And so we could just calculate this as we, we can calculate the choice probability here just using that logit choice probability that we, uh, that we talked about many weeks ago. And so in this case, we're gonna call that a conditional choice probability. We're gonna say conditional on actually knowing someone's beta, which we'll never actually know, but let's, once again, for the sake of the thought experiment, conditional on knowing someone's beta, their choice probability would just be a logit choice probability. So it's just going to be, uh, you know, th this form here that we've seen many times throughout the semester at this point. But remember, we don't actually know those betas. So what we're going to have to do is think about the fact that, well, this individual's beta could actually be any of the possible betas out there in the population. And the distribution of those uh, betas or the density of those betas out there in the population is given by this F. So let's actually integrate over that density 
multiplying by the logit choice probability to get to the unconditional choice probability that corresponds to the fact that we don't actually know each individual's beta. And once again, this is essentially like a weighted average of all of the logit choice probabilities where we're saying this individual, we don't actually know their betas, but we know it can vary throughout the population. So let's essentially take every possible value of beta out there in the population, calculate what the logit choice probability would be conditional on having that particular beta. But then we need to take an average over all of those. And in fact, we need to take a weighted average where we're weighting by the likelihood of observing a beta in the, in the population where, where that is this density function here. And so kind of mathematically the way we represent this because beta is, is uh, a continuous variable typically is that we end up with this integral formula here at the bottom of the slide, which I think once again, mathematically, it's a little, can be a little tricky to look at, but this is essentially the kind of continuous analog of just taking a weighted average over all possible logit choice probabilities and, and the probability density at each of those betas. So that's kind of one way of rationalizing those, uh, those mixed logit choice probabilities. Remember the mixed logit choice probability is, or the mixed logit model is defined by this choice probability here and, and kind of a very common way to rationalize getting to this mixed logit choice probability is to think of having these individual specific coefficients, which we as the researcher treat as random coefficients. But in the next video, we're going to look at another way to rationalize this model, which is to think about creating uh, flexible substitution patterns in our, uh, in our alternatives. And we'll look at that in the next video.